Have you ever found yourself transported to the vineyard-covered landscapes of California, where power struggles, family feuds, and dark secrets unfolded with riveting intensity? Falcon Crest, the TV series that graced our screens in 1981, did just that. It's a show that has left a lasting impression on many, evoking memories of watching it for the first time or reflecting on favorite characters and plot twists. When was the first time you watched this TV series, and which character or role held a special place in your heart? Falcon Crest boasted a cast of intriguing characters and a gripping storyline, making it a memorable experience for viewers. We'd love to hear your cherished memories and personal experiences related to Falcon Crest. Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. What made this series significant to you? Now, let's dive into some intriguing facts about Falcon Crest that will transport you back to the vineyards and mansions of Tuscany Valley. Falcon Crest, the 1981 TV series, underwent a significant transformation in its early seasons. Initially, creator Earl Hamner Jr. aimed to avoid the soap opera format. But by the second season, the show adopted a more serialized approach, resembling shows like Dallas. Throughout the series, Jane Wyman and Lorenzo Lamas were the only main cast members present for the entire run. Lorenzo Lamas held the record by appearing in all 227 episodes, while Jane Wyman was nearly ever present, missing only a few episodes. However, David Selby, who joined in the second season, surpassed Wyman in total appearances with 209 episodes, as he remained in the cast until the end. Keo Lai Kai, who joined as a recurring character, was promoted to the main cast in the last three seasons, but missed some episodes during that time. In the end, his total appearances exceeded some other cast members. Interestingly, before Falcon Crest, David Selby and Susan Sullivan were already friends, dating back to 1973. Susan Sullivan secured her role before David Selby, who joined the show in its second season after the cancellation of the short-lived series, Flamingo Road. These dynamics and transformations played a role in shaping the long-lasting legacy of Falcon Crest. Kim Novick, known for her iconic roles in Hollywood, played the character Kit Marlowe in the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest. Interestingly, Kit Marlowe's name was suggested by Harry Cohn, the CEO of Columbia Studios, as a pseudonym for Kim Novick when she was a young starlet. This choice of name had some inside jokes woven into it. Kit's real name in the series is Susan Cameron, which happens to be the name of Novick's agent during her time on the set. Another alias used by Kit Marlowe in the series, Madeline McKittrick, was a combination of the first name of one of her characters in the movie Vertigo and the McKittrick Hotel on Eddy Street in San Francisco, where Vertigo's character Maddie lived. Kim Novick's presence in Falcon Crest added a unique layer of connection and history to the show, making it an interesting tidbit for fans and viewers. This is just one of the intriguing aspects of the series Falcon Crest, which entertained audiences in 1981 and beyond. Falcon Crest, the 1981 TV series, had its share of interesting behind-the-scenes trivia. One notable tidbit is the reuse of police uniforms from the short-lived serial Flamingo Road for the show. David Selby, who starred in Flamingo Road, played a role in Falcon Crest. These reused costumes created an inside joke for those in the know. The show also shared several staff members with its rival soap, Dynasty, which had aired almost a year earlier. This crossover and crew added an intriguing layer to the world of 80-second soap operas. Additionally, a reported feud between Jane Wyman and Robert Foxworth led to unusual measures, including measuring each other's dressing room trailers to ensure they were equal in size. When Foxworth became a director for the show, Wyman even demanded a clause in her contract, making her a director, though she never directed any episodes. These tidbits offer a glimpse into the drama both on and off the screen during the production of Falcon Crest. Falcon Crest, the 1981 TV series, had its fair share of behind-the-scenes drama mirroring the intrigue on screen. One notable instance was Jane Wyman's alleged iron grip on the show, akin to her character, Angela Channing. Former co-stars, including Mel Furr, Celeste Holm, and Simon Mac Corkindale, claimed that Wyman drove them off the show. The most notorious feud was between Wyman and Lana Turner, who allegedly couldn't stand each other. They never spoke off set, and scenes between their characters were filmed separately, and later spliced together. 
Turner even suggested that Wyman's behavior was due to her ex-husband Ronald Reagan becoming president. This backstage drama added an extra layer of tension to the on-screen power struggles within the Tuscany Valley Winery. While Falcon Crest was known for its intricate plot lines, the personal conflicts among the cast also garnered significant attention. The show also had interesting creative choices, like Kim Novick's dual role in the sixth season, paying homage to her famous dual role in Vertigo. Notably, a scene between her character and Richard Channing at Fort Point near the Golden Gate Bridge mirrored a scene she had with James Stewart in the same location years earlier. Falcon Crest kept viewers hooked with its blend of familial rivalries and dramatic storylines, both on and off screen. The character of Dan Fix was originally named Ben Quick, but Brett Cullen hated the name so much, he asked to change it. This change in the character's name was a notable behind-the-scenes decision in the TV series Falcon Crest from 1981. Brett Cullen, who played the role of Dan Fix, felt that the name Ben Quick didn't suit the character, prompting the alteration. Such adjustments in character names may seem minor, but can have a significant impact on how an actor portrays their role. It's a reminder that even small details in the world of television can play a crucial part in shaping a character's identity. In the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, a significant behind-the-scenes event involved Jane Wyman, who played the character of Angela. Originally, the character was supposed to have a stroke, but it never materialized because Jane Wyman objected to it. This decision by Wyman had a notable impact on the show's storyline. Wyman's objection resulted in a different direction for Angela's character in the series. Her influence and the decision to change the character's fate demonstrated her significance in the production of Falcon Crest. In the TV series Falcon Crest from 1981, Jane Wyman, who played the character Angela Channing, wanted to portray a unique female business figure. She didn't want Angela to be just another JR, Ewing-like character. Wyman aimed to show that Angela could be both tough and compassionate, representing the complexities of women in business. This added depth to her role in the show. As we bid adieu to the captivating world of the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, we invite you to embark on a journey of reflection. This iconic show has woven its narrative tapestry into the hearts and minds of countless viewers, leaving indelible imprints of intrigue, drama, and familial rivalries. Now, it's your turn to dive into the depths of your personal connection with Falcon Crest. Did you find yourself ensnared in the web of deceit that enveloped the Geoberty and Channing families? Or perhaps, you were drawn to the lush vineyards of Tuscany Valley, where passions and ambitions collided. Whether you were a fan of Angela's cunning or the allure of forbidden romance, Falcon Crest had something for everyone. We encourage you to share your fondest memories and thoughts about this timeless series. Did it inspire your love for melodrama or did you relate to the characters and their complex relationships? Your stories and insights are the threads that continue to weave the rich tapestry of Falcon Crest's legacy. Thank you for indulging in this journey down memory lane with us. Your time and interest in celebrating the enduring magic of Falcon Crest are greatly appreciated. Farewell until we meet again, and remember, the legacy of Falcon Crest lives on through the memories you hold dear.